Why, hello there, and welcome to NS5344, Nutrition and Geriatrics. This is um, why I study geriatrics, an intro to geriatrics, what the heck we're doing here. This, this is my play at getting you interested in geriatrics. So what's, what are the class objectives here? We want to identify unique characteristics of the geriatric population. We want to discuss differences in the geriatric population, and by that I mean both the geriatric population versus the average adult population and the differences within the geriatric population. As we'll see in the course, it's a very heterogeneous group. There's a lot of uh, variation in that group. We're going to discuss that going forward. We're going to list medical challenges specific to the geriatric population, and we're going to create nutrition care plans specifically for geriatric patients. They are they have slightly, they have somewhat different needs and outcomes than a uh, average adult. Just, get out of here, mouse. Uh, going into geriatrics, we need to discuss two terms: uh, geriatrics, which is a branch of healthcare associated with diagnosing and treating age-related diseases, and gerontology, which is the study of aging and includes biological, social factors. So, geriatrics is the study of age-related diseases or the impact of age on diseases. And gerontology is essentially aging healthfully or aging well. Um, does that really matter? Probably not in the grand scheme of things, but there are people that are solidly in one camp or the other and, and think of themselves very strongly that way. So I'd, I would not recommend interchanging these two terms. You have been warned. Not by me, by the way. I... I but there are other people. Uh, so what what defines a geriatric patient? Essentially, it is being over 65. That That's the whole thing, the geriatrics. Uh, you know, they had to draw the line somewhere. That, that's what they picked. Geriatric population makes up 15% of the total U.S. population. They are a separate demographic group, and they have different nutritional needs and a higher comorbidity risk than the average adult. And remember, comorbidity means um, chances of being sick or chances of developing disease. So they have a higher risk factors to develop disease. Comorbidities. We just discussed that. 85% uh, of elders have one chronic condition. 56% have two or more. And obviously it goes up from there. But Almost every geriatric patient you will meet has an issue going on. Uh, along with that, they have, a, they have a high rate of food insecurity. More than a third of geriatric patients, uh, or geriatric people, they're not all patients, have food insecurity issues. They have decreased immune function, which relates to their higher comorbidity risk. They have higher rates of chronic diseases like CHF, CKD, COPD, they have higher rates of cancer. They are at a higher risk of anxiety and loneliness than the average adult. And they are at risk of developing a specific age-related disease called uh, frailty syndrome, which we'll discuss uh, later on. Uh, one topic or one thing to keep in mind when we discuss geriatrics and, and why geriatrics is important is... Um, the graying of America. And what that means, it's a term that relates to the average age of America increasing. Uh, it was 37. It's At this point, it's now 38.5. Uh, there's three reasons for that. The average increase in life expectancy, the increased uh, survival rates, and delayed families. And we're going into those. Uh, so it's not all bad news, right? This isn't meant to sound gloom and doom. We're living longer. The average U.S. life expectancy is go is going up. Now, I realize we've had a bit of a bump in the last couple of years, but overall, they're holding to this trend line. So in 1975, the uh, average U.S. life expectancy was 73. And as you can see, we're just a little bit past uh, being, se being 79 now. And again, even though we've had some dips here recently, they're still holding to the idea that by 2060, the average lifespan is expected to be about 85 we're dying less. The uh, average five-year breast cancer survivor rate in 1990 was 82%, and in 2020, you know, fast forward 30 years, it's over 90%. 
deaths from CVD have decreased almost 20% from 2006 to 2016, and deaths from CAD have decreased almost by a third over that same period. So our ability to survive diseases is getting better all the time. That's you know, more related to medical technology than it is to our incredible evolution and adaptability, but still, you know, good news. We're also having children later. The age of first-time mothers in 1994 was 23. The age of first-time mothers in 2016 was 26. And it's anticipated to soon be 30. And I've actually seen literature that declares we are officially past that point. Uh, 30 is the new young mother. Uh, not everybody's willing to take that that leap yet. So it's up there higher. Uh, I've seen rates from 27 to 30. So yeah, we're it's, it's still going up. All of this le uh, lends itself to creating a strain on the system. Geriatric patients place a, a disproportional strain on the healthcare system. Remember, there's only... They make up 15% of the total population, but over a third of healthcare resources go to the elderly. They spend three times more than working age adults on healthcare on average. And how much is that? Let's put that in some raw numbers because we like numbers. The average length of stay per 1,000 people, if, and this is typically the length of, this is typically how they measure hospital length of stay, is ho length of stay per 1,000 people. The average is 1042 the average for people over 65 is 344.1. It's significantly more. Average uh, days spent in the hospital is 4.2 for people that are a working age. It's 5.2 for people over 65. And the average cost of stay of the hospital is $11,700 for a working age adult and almost $13,000 for a geriatric patient. Last bit here. Say hello to Henry and Sybil. Uh, they're going to be with us throughout the course. A little bit about them. They've recently celebrated their 50th anniversary. They have three children, seven grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. And sadly, Henry's health has begun to decline in the last little bit. And that is what brings them to, brings them to you. They'll be with us for the course. That is the intro to geriatrics. I'm looking forward to a good semester. I will catch you later in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.